The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we'll be making an analog WASAD keyboard. I want to improve the PC gaming experience by allowing the same kind of analog movement control that you have while playing your video game console, but on your PC. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, remember that little oscilloscope we wired up last week? Well, I thought it'd be really cool to make a watch out of it. So I attached some coin cell battery slots on the back. However, the problem is, those batteries don't have enough amperage to keep it running for very long. It goes for about 20 seconds. So I either need to find a better battery or just a different thing to make this out of. But it was worth a shot. Geek watch. So let's start by talking about the difference between the analog gamepad controller and your keyboard. Okay, here we got Left 4 Dead. If I push W, my character just moves forward at full speed. If I push S, they move backwards at full speed. Now, since all these games are basically ports of Xbox titles, the controller works perfectly with it. The controller, though, as you can see, I can do, I can move forward slowly, I can move forward really fast, I can move backwards slowly, I can move backwards fast, and of course, I can move left and right. So I want to take the fine analog motions of this stick and put it on the WASD keys of a keyboard. Here's my plan of attack. On our keyboard, we're going to have some keys with little rod magnets in them. The rod magnets will be pushed back and forth and they will affect a Hall effect sensor. The Hall effect sensor will send its analog value to a microcontroller unit. The microcontroller will send I squared C data to a digital pot. The digital pot will simulate one of the analog sticks, specifically the left analog stick on a controller, and then the controller will go back into the PC. All right, so we're gonna start with the keyboard that I selected. I found this keyboard at the Tiger Direct uh, brick and mortar store which is good because I was able to feel all the keys. What I really wanted was a keyboard that had a long throw to each key, that is the key moves as much as possible, and also one that had a continuous um, force of motion to it. By that I mean, sometimes when you push the keyboard, it'll go click, it'll like clunk into place. This one has a spring with a constant motion all the way down, and that'll be great to simulate our analog movement that we need. There's gotta be screws here someplace. Maybe they're hiding. Oh, this must be a screw. It says, do not remove. Yep, bingo. This keyboard is higher quality than I thought it was. It appears that the switches are put in place on this side, and then they're soldered on this side with the circuit board. So in order to remove the circuit board, you'd have to desolder every switch. So what I'll do just to test it out is I'll desolder just the switches we need, W-A-S-A-D, and then go from there. I'm gonna have to cut this rod down, but the idea is when you push the key in, it'll do its normal contact, which are these two pins here, but it'll also push this magnetic rod to and fro. And we can use that to activate the analog Hall effect sensors. I plan to use Hall effect sensors that measure the magnetism off the switch. They're sensitive to north or south poles of a magnet, so it's important that we mount all these rods in the same orientation, either with all north down or all south down. So I'm gonna put this rod in a floating peanut, put it in this water. So basically we just made a compass. So that's north, so that's the south end of our magnet. Part I'm a little worried about getting the rod in place. So you can see the magnets coming through when I push the keys. That's what we'll be sensing with the Hall Effect sensors. Here are the Hall Effect sensors that I'm going to use with this project. The Hall Effect sensor requires ground, power, and then it has an output signal. The output signal is analog. 
depending on how close a magnet is to it. So it'll go in one direction when it's on that side and another direction when it's on that side. So for our keys, we're gonna be sensing how close the magnet is to the surface of it. On our board here, see where the magnets come out? So we're gonna want, so we're gonna to want to have these just above the surface so the magnet comes just up to them. And to do that, I 3D printed some parts insert 3D printed footage here of this. So these will sit in place. So the integrated circuit will be on the inside of these to hold them at the right height above the posts. We're attaching those sensors to the circuit board here instead of the bottom of the case because this way we'll know they're all a certain height above it. Time to do a test. I hooked up the Hall effect sensor to power ground and I also have the output of it going into my um, multimeter set to voltage. Multimeter, multimeter. <laughs> it's pretty good range on it. Almost a, almost a full volt. Four sensors are in place. I'm going to add some hot glue so they will stay in place. Then I'll wire them all together because their positive and grounds will be the same. And then we'll have the four outputs going to our microcontroller. So here we have our sensors wired up. We have power, ground, and then the four analog signals. So we're gonna connect those to a microcontroller and that's going to go to the Xbox 360. So the next step, I'm gonna actually take the Xbox 360 controller and get it ready. Pitching your big idea to senior management? Easier said than done. Researching, designing, and prototyping your big idea using the node on Element 14? Yup, much easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. Now let's talk about how we're gonna get those keys to the Xbox 360 controller. The Xbox has a joystick that looks like this. It's mechanical and it has two potentiometers which tells us in analog ways what the X and the Y are. The potentiometer looks like this. Typically you have a high side, let's say five volts here, a low side, resistance, and then the wiper is the part that actually moves. So you can tell what the potentiometer is by seeing if the wiper is closer to five volts or closer to ground. You could also call that a voltage divider. And it measures the potential, potentiometer, yeah. But we can't use a mechanical potentiometer, we need to simulate it. So I'm going to use a digital potentiometer. Now this is an integrated circuit, you can get these from Element 14. And a microcontroller unit sends commands to it over the I squared C bus, which we'll talk about in a little bit, telling it what to do. In this case, basically it says, set this value for pot zero and set this value for pot one. So we connect the high, the wiper, and the low, just like we would on our normal pot. So basically this chip is going to be used in place of this mechanical potentiometer. Now let's look at the values from the Hall effect sensors. I've hooked up the keyboard to an Arduino and the Arduino is going into the computer. Our code is pretty simple. We basically do an analog read off each of the sensors. So we have a sensor for W, S, A, D. So for our example, we're just gonna print out a few of the values and see if they change. So we load up the serial monitor and now I'm gonna push W a couple times and push S a couple times. And we see we have a pretty good range in each of them. So what we do is we write down the ranges that we get, then we divide those into the effective steps of the digital potentiometer, and that's how we set up our fake joystick. Here's the integrated circuit we put onto the Xbox 360 controller board. You can see that it's wired up in place of the analog stick that we removed. Also over here, we attach these resistors and they will simulate the second analog stick. If we left it open, it would be all over the place and wanky. So we put resistors in to simulate the potentiometers so it will be kept in a constant, steady state. I now have all the parts together. Here's the original PCB that was in the keyboard. It has a hub included with it, so I was able to attach the Xbox 360 controller to the hub. Here's a microcontroller, which is going to get the inputs from the keyboard and the I squared C bus going to the digital potentiometer that we built into the controller. 
So then what you do is you put the keyboard in place, plug this into the microcontroller part, and it should be ready to go. Now we're ready to test it with a game. I'm gonna use Left 4 Dead. Now I need to go into options and go into keyboard and mouse. Then I need to edit the buttons and keys. I have to actually disable the WASD keys because I don't want them to be pushed as keys. I want them to work as a joystick. If I don't do this, they'll trigger before the joystick is fully pressed. So I'm actually going to map those to something weird like, uh, oh, I don't know, V, B, N, M. All right, apply. Also, I want to make sure that gamepad is enabled. As I mentioned earlier, most games on PC are just ports of the console version, but the side effect is the Xbox 360 controller almost always works just like that. All right, so we're in game here, and what I'm basically gonna do is use the Wasad keys to move my character in an analog fashion. Now, normally in a PC first person shooter, you push W to go forward and you go forward full speed. Sometimes you push shift to run faster, but yes, yeah, it doesn't have the analog control like a video game system does. All right, so let's go forward, okay. Backward, slowly, and then fast. Left, slowly, and then fast. Right, slowly, and then fast. Well, there you have it. We used Hall Effect sensors, magnets, a microcontroller, an Xbox 360 controller, and a PC keyboard to give the PC keyboard analog motion controls. My rave today is Borderlands 2. It's a great sequel that's fixed most of the nagging issues of the first game, including the navigation system that I never understood. It's also a long game, a good 20 plus hours, which is rare for a first person shooter these days. Though Borderlands is more of a first person looter, there's plenty of value right out of the box, which leads me into my rant. My rant today is about DLC, downloadable content. I'm not ranting about the fact that it exists, rather the speed in which it comes out. Too fast. With Borderlands 2, for example, there was a mere three days gap between us beating the game and the first expansion pack being released. Plus, the faster they release content, the more likely people are to say, why wasn't that on the disc? Another downside is desynchronization. If you don't get a pack when everyone else does, you'll no longer be on the same level as them. So I like DLC, I just wish there's a little bit more breathing room between expansions. Before we go, I'll be answering a viewer question I get asked frequently, which is, can you build an Xbox 360 laptop that runs off of batteries? Yes, I could do that, but the size of the batteries required would make the unit larger than anyone would want. Keep in mind, a laptop you buy in the store uses many specialized smaller parts, while the Xbox 360, being a cost-effective console, does not. It's larger, which is cheaper. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to start building a double-decker 3D printer. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.